Hello everyone, this is Rajeshwari, Assistant Professor, Department of English. In today's class, we will discuss a sonnet, sonnet number 116. It's written by William Shakespeare. Let's see about the poet first. William Shakespeare, who was born in the year 1564 in Stratford-upon-Avon, which is in United Kingdom, and died in the year 1616 in Stratford-upon-Avon, United Kingdom. So the birth and death plays of Shakespeare is actually the same. Shakespeare was an English playwright, poet and an actor who was widely regarded as the greatest writer in the English language and the world's greatest dramatist who was often called as England's national poet and the bard of Avon. Bard means the poet, so the poet of Avon. Shakespeare's contributions to the world of literature are 37 plays, 154 sonnets, and 3 long narrative points. These are his contributions to the literary world. Sonnet uh, What does mean by sonnet? Sonnet is nothing but a poem of 14 lines. 14 line poems are what we call sonnet. There is a particular division for a sonnet. Three quatrain and a couplet would be there in a sonnet. So quatrain means a stanza of four lines. Three quatrain would be there in a sonnet plus a couplet. So quatrain means a stanza of four lines. Couplet is two lines of poetry, a poetry of two lines. A poem, a sonnet 116, which was written in 1590 but published in 1609. Written in 1590 and published in 1609. The structure and form of this sonnet is just like a normal Shakespearean sonnet. The structure and form of this sonnet is a typical example of Shakespearean sonnet. And uh, in 16th century, the poets of England started writing poetry in the form of sonnet. Totally, there are 154 sonnets which is written by William Shakespeare. Out of that, first 126 sonnets which is addressed to a young man who was very close to the poet Shakespeare. Then the rest of the sonnets from 127 to 154. In these sonnets, Shakespeare addresses a woman who is well known as the Dark Lady. Let's come to the poem. In this poem, which focuses on the nature of love in relationship and in relation to time, in this sonnet, the poet addresses a male friend, a male beloved, and he tries to prove a speaker of the poem. The poet himself is the speaker of the poem. So he tries to prove the superiority of love over the time. Throughout this poem, a poet, William Shakespeare, who tries to prove uh, the concept that the superiority of love over the time, over the passage of time. Let's start the poem. Let me not to the marriage of true minds admit impediments. Love is not love which alters when it alteration finds or bends with a remover to remove. Here in this first stanza, the poet, the speaker of the poem, who it tells the reader that he cannot accept any impediments or any hindrances in between marriage or in between the marriage of true minds or true hearts. Here, the term minds which meant by uh, people. So the poet, William Shakespeare, who cannot accept any impediments in between the marriage of true minds or true hearts. Love is not love which alters when it alteration finds. He tells that love is not love if it changes by the force of someone or by the external or internal force of someone or something. If it changes, if the love changes by force, it is not true love. True love should not be changed. It will never be changed. So love is not love if it alters 
when you be forced by someone or when the force has come or bends with a remover to remove love is not love if your love removes when the remover comes there and remove if your love bent by the forces of someone then it is not true love true love will not be altered it will never be changed from person to person or by the force of someone else if it changes by force then we cannot call it as a true love it is not true love if it is a true love that will overcome any hurdles any problems any hindrances so in the first stanza the poet makes the concept clear that true love will not be altered or changed by the force of someone if it changes if love changes by force then it is not true love then we cannot call it as true love so love is not love which alters when it alteration finds if your love is changed by any external force if your love is changed by the influence of someone then it is not true love it should not be changed or it should never be altered by any force by any external or internal force when a remover come there to make problems or when a remover comes there to remove your love it should never be removed then we cannot call it as a true love so it should sustain all the hurdles it should overcome true love should overcome all the hurdles all the problems and that should be constant forever let's come to the second stanza or oh, no it's an ever fixed mark that looks on tempest and is never shaken it is a star to every wandering bark whose worth is unknown whose worth is unknown although his height be taken or oh, no it's an ever fixed mark here the poet the speaker of the poem who tells that it should be an ever fixed mark it should be constant our true love our love should be constant that should overcome even tempest it should sustain even in tempest your love should never be shaken even in tempest even in storm it should be a, it is a star here there is a reference for this star here the star is actually the north star north star which shows direction to the lost ships in earlier days in olden times actually uh, the axis of earth is pointed almost directly at this north star so during night north star uh, doesn't rise actually this north star doesn't rise or doesn't set so during night times uh, as it remains in the same position during night times it shows path it shows the right direction for the sailors so the sailors uh, they used they have used this once as a navigational tool due to its constant position or consistent position in the sky at one time sailors used this north star as a navigational tool so during day and night this north star remains in the same position in the sky it remains the same and in the same position in the sky or the same spot in the sky so that in earlier times sailors they have used this north star as a navigational tool so this north star which acted as a guidance for, for the lost ship for the navigators for the lost ship here our love is just equal to this north star how north star is constant in the sky like that our love should also be constant in the heart it should never be changed by any force it is the star to every wandering bark whose worth is unknown although his height be taken this north star remains very high in the sky but some people may not have realized the value or the worth of this star of this north star so like that some people they might not have realized the value of a true love 
here the poet tells the value or the worth of a true love. So here the poet who compares true love with the North Star. How North Star give guidance to the lost ship. True love will also guide you to take your life forward. To take the next step of your life. The black does a guide. How North Star has acted as a guide for the lost ship. Or for the navigators. Third stands of the poem. Love is not time's fool. Though rosy lips and cheeks within his bending sickle's compass come. Love alters not with his brief hours and weeks. But bears it out even to the edge of doom. Here the poet or the speaker who tells to the reader that love is not time's fool. Love should not be time's fool. Your rosy lips and cheeks may fade away. It will fade away one day. Your physical appearance is not permanent for you. It's not permanent. When you come from childhood to adolescence, you lose your childhood, the age or the stage of childhood. Then when you come from your adolescence to middle age, you will lose your adolescence, the stage or the precious days or the happy days of that adolescent age, adolescent period. So nothing is permanent in this world. Your physical appearance is obviously which is impermanent in this world. Your rosy lips and cheeks, everything will fade away one day. You may have all this beauty and oh, elegant physical structure today, but it will say goodbye to you one day. So it is just impermanent. Your physical appearance is not permanent. So love should not be time's fool. Love should not calculate this physical appearance or the external appearance. Within his bending sickle's compass come, love alters not with his brief hours and weeks. Love should not be altered by this short span of time. Our human period is actually we have only short span of time to live in this beautiful world not even exactly uh, 80 or 90 sometimes we may cross oh, 80 90 not sure so anyway we have only a short span of time to live in this beautiful world so in this brief hours or in this uh, short span of our time we should never change our emotions from one person to another. In this short span of our time, in this brief hours or in this short span of weeks or months or years, your love should be constant. That should never uh, what, depend or that should never be altered by the influence of time or the person. It should never be influenced by any external force. Or by the passage of time. Time may pass. Days uh, will pass or time may pass. But the emotion or the feelings what we have to a particular person that should be constant. That should never be altered by the influence of time. So love alters not with its brief hours and weeks. Love should not be altered by the influence of this short period of time. By the influence of this brief hours or short weeks. But bears it out even to the edge of doom. But instead, instead of being influenced by any external force, your love should be constant that should sustain till the end of the world's existence. Doom means a doomsday. In religious belief, the last day of world's existence is what we call by this term doomsday. So your love should be constant even till the end of or even till the last day of this world's existence. The last two lines of this poem, that is the couplet of this poem. If this be error and upon me proved, I never write nor no man ever loved. And this is 
exactly to the readers this couplet is for readers he has written he tells to the readers that if you feel which is error if you feel that is error if you feel what he told you throughout this poem is error then you prove me you prove me and if you prove me it is wrong i will never write and i can say that or the poet can say that no man ever loved anyone no man ever loved any woman or no man or no one ever loved anyone this is how the poem ends so throughout this poem the poet tries to show the superiority of true love over the passage of time he tells that no one cannot be prove that it is wrong or it is error because this is the place of true love this is this is how a true love should be this is how a true love should be this is what we call a true love uh, this should be a true love this is what the poet or the speaker of the poem uh, william shakespeare who explains who portrayed clearly crystal clearly throughout these lines themes of this poems are love versus time the concept of true love love as a source of guidance we have seen all these themes in the poems love versus time so love should not be altered or should not be influenced by the passage of time the concept of true love is also well portrayed here it should never be altered by any external force or by any internal force love he portrayed the concept of true love clearly and what should be a love how should be a love then love has a source of guidance here the poet who tells that true love will guide you to take your life forward to take your life ahead so like how the north star give guidance to the lost ship how north star acted as a navigational tool true love will also guide you as a north star to take your life forward so that's all today hope you all understood thank you